Three lead. Next cold front on our doorstep. I'll show you how that will impact storm chances. <clears throat> What's up, Facebook? What's going on, man? I'm back after the hacking thing, but anyway, just wanted to kind of talk to you real quick about this church hurt thing. I'm, I'm kind of baffled. <clears throat> Got to be totally honest with you. Um, everybody posting church hurt, and I think a lot of this is coming from Leandria. You know what I'm saying, and what she went through, and you know her getting online and on live and using profanity and doing all the other stuff, and now people feel sorry for her because she came back. And she apologized, and which we should be willing to forgive her. Don't get me wrong. Um, but this church hurt thing is a funny thing, man. Um, if anybody church is, trust me, I do. I've been there, done that. And the lifestyle I live, trust me, everybody was judgmental. You know what I'm saying? They'll pull out Leviticus on you, you know, heartbeat, you know. Uh, you know, homosexuality is an abomination, but there's other things in the Bible that was abominable too, like as far as eating shellfish and, you know, um, just doing a whole lot of things and the bible even says that god um hates a proud look um you know he hates the, uh, the shedding of innocent blood but not, yet nobody don't talk about that so i'm coming in two parts um at the end of the day church hurt is real it's a real thing it happens you know what i'm saying it happens to everybody but i think the reason why the church hurts hurt so bad is because we expect people to be something that they're not. They're not God. And and the thing is, like I told one of our friends today, is that when I go to church, is to come and fellowship with the saints. It has nothing to do about them showing me who God is. You know what I'm saying? It has nothing to do with that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it has everything to do with me fellowshipping with the saints, what the Bible tells me to do. The Bible says that we're not to forsake the assembly of the saints. So that, that has nothing to do with my worship. That has nothing to do with my relationship with God. So I think a lot of people, they, they vicariously live their relationship with God through the pastor or through the deacon or through the choir director or through the musicians or whoever. <clears throat> and when we do that, we have to understand these people are human and they're going to fail. They're going to fail. They, they're human. We make mistakes. And so some of these mistakes are intentional, some of them are not. So what I have to say is that when you get hurt in church, it's no difference from when you with that man that hurt you or that woman that hurt you or when you at work and that, that boss talked to you in a bad manner, you go back to work, but yet and still we automatically shut down on God. God has not done anything to you or me that has been harmful. You know, he has done nothing. And the devil can use church people. He used them the most, as Shah said earlier today, is that the devil will use the church folk to make a mockery of God, to make people say, well, you know what, if you're supposed to be a Christian, then, then why they treat me this way? And Leandria, when it come down to her, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if she was saved or had a relationship with Christ, or she just went into the gospel industry. Just because a person sings gospel does not mean they're saved. Does not mean they have a relationship with God. Um, no relationship with God. If you think about Snoop Dogg, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he made a, a, a gospel CD, but it doesn't mean that he's a Christian either. So we got to be careful with this church hurt thing and stop using it as a crutch. You want to get hurt. That's life. The Bible says that our days will be filled, filled with trouble. We're going to have trials and tribulations. So why are we tripping when somebody do us wrong? The Bible says just the fact that you are carried in the name of Christ, you'll be offended and persecuted for that name. But yet until people get so shocked when somebody say something to you that you don't like, get over it. It's life. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and, and, and learn how to seek God. Don't seek man. Man, man is a trip, man. Man will sit up here and judge you and then do the same thing you did. And then they uh <clears throat> And then they'll look, look at you like you're wrong. My thing is this. The Bible says every man has sinned and fallen short of the glory. Every man. But the thing is, we have to get to the place where we re, we're not just always rebuking somebody, but we're going back to restore them. And I think a lot of these people that got saved, and, and I've been there too, I've been guilty of it, where I walked around because I got my relationship right with Christ and I don't live in the lifestyle no more. Sometimes I find myself, you know, in a judgmental position where I'm saying, you know what, them, them punks, they need to stop and God ain't pleased. You know what, but God wasn't pleased when I was doing it. God wasn't pleased when I was turning up. God wasn't pleased when I was cursing. God wasn't pleased when I was fornicating. And truth be told, he wasn't pleased when you was doing it either. But his grace was sufficient for you. So we got to learn how to start giving people grace. And stop sitting up here, you know, just using these things as a, a quest just to do what we want to do. I mean, come on, man. Everybody's been hurt. 
Everybody's been hurt. You name me one person on earth that has not been hurt, I'll be quiet. I'll be quiet. But church hurt is real. Hurt is real. I mean, church hurt, I don't even know why we call it church hurt. We got this auto call it hurt. I mean, because people in church, they're, they're not together either. They're going there to get better. You know what I'm saying? And, and it comes from us holding each other accountable. It comes from us loving on each other. It comes from us praising, praying for each other. It comes from us uh, esteeming others higher than ourselves. This is where this stuff comes from. But we don't do that, though. We we, we so busy looking up, looking down on somebody or turning our nose up at somebody. Like I said, man, Le Leandria, yes, yeah, she had hurt. But I don't know if it necessarily came from the church because, honestly, I think she went into something she wasn't ready for. This is why we need to let the Holy Spirit draw people to Christ and stop trying to force them into Christ. I know a lot of people in the church, for real, for real, especially the PKs, a lot of them end up being what we call the worst children because they were forced to be something they did not set themselves out to do. Now, the parents did the right thing by teaching them and raising them in the way. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, when the child had grown, they was able to make their own decisions. And I think sometimes people make decisions predicated on the, 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 the feelings of others. I know I did that for a long time. That's why I would always be back out there in the world doing what I do because I would change for people. But once I realized that people really don't have a heaven or a hell to put me in and they, that, that they really can't wake me up in the morning and they can't put me to sleep at night, when I started realizing that they could not keep my health, man, I stopped worrying about what people think, man. I really could care less. Like me being alive right now, I don't care about nobody having a problem with it because at the end of the day, I do what I'm commission to do. And once people get in their lane and know what they're supposed to do and know their purpose in the earth, then they won't be so busy trying to live vicariously through somebody else. So, I mean, this church hurt is real. This hurt is real. Let's just put it that way. It's real. But we got to stop using it as a quest too, because some of this stuff we inflict on ourselves. You telling me that you're the pastor and you go out here and sleep with one of the members and you get her pregnant and somebody call you out on it and you're hurt because they call you out on it, that they're wrong? No, you brought that on yourself, bro. And sis, if you go out here and you sleep with somebody um, and have premarital sex and you get knocked up and the pastor say, well, you can't usher no more. You say, I'm hurt because he sat me down because I had premarital sex. There's nothing wrong with that. If you go to that job and you come in late and they write you up, do you go off on a job and you walk off the job? Of course not. When you when you go to work, you do what you're supposed to do. But we treat God like he's a jump off or something. I don't understand. And if your church hurting you that bad, go to another church. Go to another church, man. Sometimes the truth hurts. I mean, it hurts. If somebody tell me right now, Dante, you fat. I might get offended and it may hurt, but it ain't no lie. Dante, you can lose some weight. So, and, and Dante, you don't know everything. I'll tell everybody in the heartbeat, I don't know everything. But one thing I am learning is how to give people grace and how to give people amnesty and how to how to show compassion towards people. I can tell you that you're wrong without being brutal. And I think that's a lot of times. And uh, with Leandra, I think that she was more offended that uh, that that Marvin Winans did not recognize or did not treat her the way she felt like she should be treated. Sometimes the celebrity mess people up, man. They feel like, because do you know who I am? You know, like I'm, I'm X, Y, Z. You want to treat me with respect. But if I don't know you like that, then I, I might not respect you like that. I mean, I'm, I'm just being real. That's just me. You know, um, so again, this church hurt thing, man. We got to take it in stride and, and then get healed. You know what I'm saying? Take some time to get healed. Don't just speak from your pain. Because a lot of times we speak from our pain. We kind of speak it from a place of, of hurt. And then we're saying the wrong things. We got to take some time to heal. You know what I'm saying? When a woman having a baby, think about it. When a woman having a baby, she might use some all types of language. She might tell that baby daddy, I hate you. I can't stand you because she's in pain. But once that baby is birthed out and the pain is subsided, then she's back to feeling what she really feels. So we can't just always speak from our pain. I know we do it, but we shouldn't always do that. Because when we do, people want to judge you from what you talked about. They're going to judge you from that place of pain instead of trying to figure out, okay, how can we heal you? I know people did that to me, man. I'm going to tell you, bruised. I said I was never going to say nothing about the Lord anymore. I was never going to ever, ever do anything anymore. And I got people that if you see this video, they'll probably tell you he's, he did say he wasn't going to do nothing else for God anymore. But when I realized God hasn't done me nothing wrong, 
He's never treated me wrong. He's never been wrong. I began to really realize that my relationship had to be with God, not with man. Not with man. And a matter of fact, people always talk about, I led you to Christ. Listen, the Bible says no man comes to Christ or comes to the Father unless the Spirit draws him. So nobody can really necessarily lead you to Christ. They can tell you about Christ. They can tell you about his goodness. But nobody can really lead you to Christ. Because the Bible says the Spirit draws you. It's something inside your spirit and in his spirit that brings you together. So a lot of these things that we have heard in church, people have has misinterpreted the word of God. Some of them don't have a spirit of God to be able to rightfully divide the word of truth. So this is what happens. So, man, like I said, I don't know everything, but I do know how it is to be hurt in a church setting. I know how it feels. I know how it feels when a preacher, you know, as soon as you walk in the room, they start preaching about your issue. You know they're talking about you. But at the end of the day, you got to learn how to take it in strides. What I do now is do like a grown man. I eat the fish and I spit out the bones. I'm learning how to eat the fish real good now. Even the fine bones that may choke me up every now and then, I know how to spit those out as well. So we got to learn and we got to help each other get to that point. Ain't nobody so worthy at this point. Ain't nobody on this earth ever been in heaven on this side. So we, we got to, we ought to all push each other to get there. And like I say, how we get there by loving each other, by, 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 by telling each other the truth. But it's not always in a harsh way you're going to hell. Man, most people know they sin and they're going to hell. They know that. So let's stop putting these labels on people. You're going to hell and you ain't saved and you ain't this or you ain't that. Because the Bible says, which were some of us, we all have been drunkards and whoremongers and fornicators and liars and adulterers. We've all done something. All of us have been ex something. So once we remember that it was the grace of God that saved us, then we'll start extending that grace. Because the Bible says in order to get mercy, we have to give mercy. And I think a lot of times we don't give it. Because we use that book to beat people with. And what, what, what Jesus told Peter, he said in John 21, he said, listen, don't beat them, feed them. Feed my sheep. You got to get to the point to where the sheep is willing to walk into your in your hand. If you got some in your hand and willing to eat out of your hand. But if you beat the sheep, that sheep is going to always kind of be timid or going to run away from you. And this is what's happening to the body of Christ. People are running from the body of Christ because some of us are just too brutal. And like I said, there comes a time we got to have a heart correction. Don't get me wrong. Because God don't have to heart correct me plenty of times. But there's a time that we got to show love. And Ecclesiastes 3 tells us there's a time for everything under the sun. We got that. There's a time to love. There's a time to hate. There's a time to say I love you. And there's a time to say I hate the sin that you're in. There's a time to, to give. And there's a time to hold back. There's a time for me to give you the truth. And there's some time for me just to be quiet and just pray about it. We got to learn when. And the Holy Ghost will tell you when. There's a lot of things I want to say to people. There's a lot of things I want to do to people. But the Spirit say, nope, not yet. Deal with this this way. So we got to learn how to be led by the Spirit. Because the Bible says those that are led by the Spirit are those are his children. Those are his sons and daughters. But a lot of us are being led by our flesh and our emotions. And so when you let our emotions lead us, it'll lead us right out from our liberation. So that's why I'm free, because I don't really care. I'm human. I get mad too. But at the end of the day, I'm not mad at the Lord, because the Lord has did nothing wrong to me at all. So that's just my take on it. So, you know, like I said, I don't know everything. I would never be the one to say I know everything because I don't. But what I do know is I know hurt. I know pain. Trust me, I know it. But I understand that each day I get up, I can heal more and more in that area. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and call a spade a spade. Period. But it's time for me to get ready, get ready to go to Bible study. Um, and I'm doing it because I want to. <laughs> I'm doing it because I've been told I had to. I'm doing it because I want to. You know what I'm saying? And so I love you guys, man. You know, um, again, this church hurt or this hurt is real. So I'm not going to diminish the pain. I'm not going to ever be the one to say, well, y'all need to just get over it. But if we can get over somebody hurting us and we can get over people lying to us and mistreating us, why can't we do the same for the Father? That's that's just my question. Why can't we, we try him again? Just like we'll try relationships again. Why can't we try him again? Try him again. Like they used to say back in the day, old taste and see, the Bible even says it, that he is good. And I'm telling you something, his mercy endure forever. Forever and ever. So 
like I said, man, just want to encourage somebody today, man. I don't never want to use what I call a platform to beat nobody down, but the truth is welcome, and we got to do better. We got to do better about how we love each other. And like I said, it does not absorb you from telling people the truth. You got to be honest. You got to tell people the truth, but it's all about the delivery. How do you deliver that truth? Because if you deliver that truth in a way that a person can receive it, then that's a better way. Because the Bible says a harsh answer will turn away, a harsh answer will stir up wrath, but a soft answer will turn away wrath. So a lot of us seeing this wrath and people being mad because we're barking just as loud as they are. Somebody got to learn how to simmer down and hear the Holy Spirit and be quiet and, and learn how to, how to speak and, and, and learn how to be quiet. Because the Bible says that we have to study to be quiet. We study in everything else. That's one thing that we don't know how to do is shut our mouths. Sometimes we can't put our mouth on everything. We can't talk about everything. Some things we just need to talk to the Father about. And the Bible says that the heart of the king is in his hand. And he can turn it whichever way he wants to do it. He'll do what he wants to do however he wants to do it. So let us stop having this God complex where we feel like we can change somebody. We couldn't even change ourselves. We couldn't. So, like I said, man, I love you guys, man. If you have church hurt, talk to the healer. There's still a bomb in Gilead. There's still Jehovah Rapha. He's still on the on the main line. Call him up and tell him what you want. <laughs> he still heals. He still restores. Talk to him. He will heal you when you hurt. And he knows that. He know what the root of it is. He know how to get to it. So I love you guys, man. I'm out. Just want to give my two cents on it. I mean, I know everybody else gave their two cents. I'm giving mine. Man, I love you guys the most. Y'all be blessed. I'm just out. Peace.